Is there anybody out there who does not know the feeling when you've just damaged the paint of your car? A moment of inattention and then despair, frustration, anger, wrath. Can we skip back 10 seconds, please? Baby, you give me ice and fire. You're giving me wind and rain. You're some kind of bird. The scratch, dent, scuff. It may just be a little one, but once it happened, once it's in the world, it cannot be unseen anymore. Ever since I did this to poor Walter, it's the first thing that captures my gaze when I look at the car. It's horrible! It needed to go away! And I'm not the only one. The owner of this beautiful Alfa Romeo 101 hired me to readjust the window frames and to seal them properly. Driving through rain felt like taking a shower, he told me. While removing the left A-pillar, however, he used a little too much force on the old sealant and some of the paint came off, down to the naked steel. Right when it happened, I applied some two-component primer and always when I had some leftovers, I added another layer. The car would stay at my workshop for the entire winter, so there was no hurry. When, after a couple of treatments, the paint had been built up to almost level out the damage and the actual blend paint shop was about to begin, I realized this could become a film project. With this sort of smart repair, the crucial point is leveling. Whatever the approach is to get there, at some point polyester putty will come into play. And it's a bit of a tricky product. I try to avoid applying it directly to steel because it tends to absorb humidity and accordingly trigger oxidation on the underlying metal. Secondly, I try to avoid layers thicker than a millimeter or two because on the long run it also tends to shrink, potentially resulting in ugly cracks. Let me add a word about this polyester soaks up water and transmits it to the panel story. It's one of these things with the internet, you know. I guess there is a core of truth, but it's arguably one of the most exaggerated urban myths around car restoration of all times. You see, we're going to put a layer of acrylic paint over it, so in the first place water won't get there. I mean, yes, there might be stone chips, and then, yes, the putty is exposed to humidity and, yes, if you're sloppy enough to ignore the stone chip for years and constantly pour water into it, you might get some surface rust. But before that, the car will ten times have rusted away inside out. So, if you feel that some polyester putty would help with your project, the self-destruction button of your car, it is not. Two-component epoxy primer. It's probably one of the most widely used terms on this channel. Yet, I'm now using normal one-component primer from the rattle can. And there's a reason for that. I want it to penetrate the final scratches and irregularities, but else put up as little resistance as possible to be sanded off again. And the much softer one-component product serves that purpose better. Using a small brush to pour drops of primer specifically into obvious defects in the surface helps me keeping the additional layers as thin as possible. And at this very point, the entire project decides between failure and success. It's all about the leveling.
Applying the final coat, what we want is a soft transition between the new and the old paint and the tape is therefore bent. Gesundheit. Now for finishing this job. The product you've seen me using in the past minutes are 3M sanding sponges. I have them from medium, which I use on putty, to fine, super fine, ultra fine and micro fine. The latter for the ultimate smoothing, followed then by polishing. In terms of smart repair, that was a bit of an excursion, using a product named Liquid Metal, which is an epoxy including some amount of metal powder to match the thermal expansion of steel and aluminium. I used it two years ago to repair Walter's backlights and it has endured very well. Talking about Walter, I did pretty much exactly the same job on him like I did on the 101 Alpha. I used polyester putty to fill the chipped area. Note that galvanization of the panel was in perfect shape. Sanded it down to the level of the rest. Used two component epoxy primer to level it even more and fill the defects in the putty and sanded it again.
Do you remember what I said earlier? Leveling is what it's all about. To eliminate remaining imperfections, I used the soft and easy to send one component primer from the rattle can with bent tape at the edge of the masked area to get a soft transition. Strangely, the paint on the lower rear edge of the door was scratched off too, and if it was me who did that, I wasn't even aware. Some of the primer ran under the tape a little, as you can see, but that's not a problem because it doesn't stick very well to the existing top coat and can be sanded off easily. I don't know whether I've mentioned it before, but leveling is the essential part of it all. As a base coat I'm using two component acrylic paint, because unlike water paint it can be sanded and that would allow me to eliminate remaining unevenness, but there wasn't any. Very little paint is needed if preliminary coats have been built up properly and as the little anestivata has as good as no overspray, no masking is required. Walter, though the guard's red, obviously is not metallic paint, had been clear coated at some point, and of course the repair needs to comply with the rest. To make a wet clear coat, my spot repair gun is the way to go. Soft edge tape makes sure that the transition area is nice and smooth, and there won't be any sharp edges to be sanded down. Spraying a rich clear coat, it's a rather common thing to get a bit of a paint excess at the sharp edges of the doors. I see that happening also when experienced pro painters do their magic. It just needs to be sanded down. It's not a big deal to do this. The actual challenge is to know when to stop. Eventually the whole thing is treated with the ultra and microfine sanding sponges, both for blending in the new clear coat to the old one and to do the final leveling. Don't worry about sanding the glossy clear coat of a car. Everybody has a little mixed emotions doing this, but it's exactly what these products are made for. It will all buff out with a little high cut polish and a second go with a milder polish will bring back all the shine.